Hi, my name is Stefano, and welcome to ABTV News, where we cover the latest political and world events. Here are the headlines for this week. President Obama speaks at service for slain officers. Austria moves to stop neo-Nazi cult site. Bangladesh to ban Islamic TV channel Peace TV. Venezuelan army deployed to control food production and distribution. Brazil beefs up security ahead of Olympic Games in Rio. Let's get to the full story. President Barack Obama and other officials who spoke Tuesday at a memorial for five Dallas police officers killed last week urged Americans to corral their anger and sadness and push for change society needs. The president said, I believe our sorrow can make us a better country. I believe our righteous anger can be transformed into more justice and more peace. Weeping may endure for a night, but I'm convinced joy comes in the morning. The Dallas officers were fatally gunned down Thursday by a sniper, an army veteran who targeted the officers, perhaps as retribution for police violence largely unrelated to North Texas. For five days, the news has revolved around the horrific details of the slayings, but on Tuesday afternoon, the focus was on the men in blue who lost their lives, keeping watch over what had been a peaceful protest. Their deaths came amid a tragic week for the nation that saw Alton Sterling in Louisiana and Philando Castillo in Minnesota killed during encounters with police. Obama praised police for protecting and serving the people. Like police officers across the country, these men and their families shared a commitment to something larger than themselves, the president said. The reward comes in knowing that our entire way of life in America depends on the rule of law, that the maintenance of that law is a hard and daily labor, that in this country we don't have soldiers in the streets or militias setting the rules. Instead, we have public servants, police officers like the men who were taken away from us. Police in Dallas showed incredible restraint and saved more lives than we will ever know, Obama said. When the bullets started flying, the men and women of the Dallas police, they did not flinch and they did not act recklessly, he said. And I know it because of what we've seen here in Dallas. How all of you, out of great suffering, have shown us the meaning of perseverance and character and hope. When the bullets started flying, the men and women of the Dallas police, they did not flinch and they did not react recklessly. They showed incredible restraint. At the service, former President George W. Bush also called for unity. At times, it seems like the forces pulling us apart, we are stronger than the forces binding us together. Argument turns too easily into animosity. Too often, we, are judge, we judge other groups by their worst examples while judging ourselves by our best intentions, said Bush, who is also a former governor of Texas. Dallas Mayor Mike Rawlings and Police Chief David Brown addressed the crowd as well. The ceremony was not public, but the memorial was being simulcast at Clyde Warren Park, a short walk from the Symphony Hall. In addition to their joint appearance, Obama and Bush will also meet with the families of the slain officers. An interfaith choir opened Tuesday afternoon service, and the Dallas Police Choir sang the national anthem. An imam, rabbi, and Methodist minister from the area were to deliver an interfaith prayer before the speakers take the podium. The ceremony ended with the interfaith choir, composed of singers from area congregations, joining the Dallas Police Choir in closing with the Battle Hymn of the Republic as the officials on stage clasped each other's hands. Austria's government is to seize the house where Adolf Hitler was born in 1889 to prevent it becoming a site of pilgrimage for neo-Nazis. The owner, a retired local woman, has refused repeated offers to buy the house in Brno um, in, in the past. However, there is disagreement over what to do with the house next. The interior minister wants it demolished, but others say a museum or even a supermarket would more effectively depoliticize it. The decision is necessary because the Republic would like to prevent the house from becoming a cult site for neo-Nazis in any way, which it has been repeatedly in the past. When people gathered there to shout slogans, interior minister Wolfgang Sobotka said, it is my vision to tear down the house, he added. However, Vice Chancellor Reinhold Mittenlener said a project with educational value, such as a museum, would be a better use of the site, Depressing Newspaper reported. 
Growing numbers of people were traveling to the house, the documentation center of Austria resistance said. But the government's head, Gerard Baumgartner, said demolishing the building would not solve the problem, as right-wing extremists would instead have a Hitler square or Hitler park to visit instead. The place must be fully depoliticized, and something has to be there that no one will want to be photographed in front of, he told the Austrian Broadcasting Company. Locating a supermarket or fire station in the building could have the desired effect, Mr. Baumgartner said. The Austrian state has rented the house since 1972 and currently pays about 4,800 euros or 5,300 U.S. dollars a month for it. The building has in the past housed workshops for disabled people but has been empty since 2011 because the owner repeatedly rejected ideas of its future use as well as purchase offers from the state, an interior ministry spokesman said. Under the new proposal, the owner will receive compensation similar to that awarded when homes are demolished to make way for railway projects. The bill to seize the house will now go before Parliament. If it is passed, the building's fate will then be decided by a commission consisting of 12 members from the fields of politics, administration, academia, and civil society. The only obvious link to the building's past is a stone outside inscribed with the words, For peace, freedom, and democracy, never again fascism, Millions of dead remind us. Bangladesh has said it intends to ban the Islamic television channel Peace TV in the wake of the deadly attack on a cafe in the capital Dhaka. The government's decision comes amid fears that hardline views on the channel could radicalize youth. A preacher on the channel, Zakir Naik, denied allegations his words could have inspired the attackers. Gunmen killed 22 people when they stormed the Holly Artisan Bakery in Dhaka earlier this month. Bangladesh's information minister, Hassanul Haq Inu, said that administrative steps would be taken towards the banning of the channel. Peace TV is not consistent with Muslim society. The Quran, Sunnah, Hadith, Bangladesh's constitution, our culture, customs, and rituals, Mr. Inu to told online news outlet BD News 24, after the Cabinet Committee on Law and Order decided to ban the channel. The 24-hour TV channel is broadcast from Dubai in English, Urdu, and Bangla. Mr. Naik is also the founder and president of the Mumbai-based Islamic Research Foundation, which owns Peace TV. He was once banned from entering the UK for what was described as unacceptable behavior, but he has denied an allegation that one of the gunmen in the cafe attack was inspired by his speeches, accusing Bangladeshi media of sensationalism. I spoke to Bangladeshi government people. They told me they do not believe I inspired this Bangladeshi terrorist to do this act of killing innocent people, Mr. Naik is quoted as saying in local media. Venezuela's military has started monitoring ports and food processing plants in a new effort to guarantee supplies of food and medicines. In a decree, President Nicolas Maduro has ordered the army to coordinate the production and distribution of items. Venezuela is going through a deep economic crisis despite having the world's largest oil reserves. Basic products are increasingly scarce and many say they struggle to feed their families. Mr. Maduro says the measure is to fight the economic war he claims is being waged against his government by political foes and businessmen with U.S. backing. But the opposition says the government has mismanaged the economy and has called for a referendum to oust the president. Some reasons behind the shortages are that Venezuela grows and produces very little except oil and has historically relied on imports to feed its people. Another reason is that oil prices have plummeted, leaving the government with a shortfall of income. A lack of dollars means it is struggling to import all the goods its people need and want, and the socialist government introduced price controls on some basic goods in 2003 to make them affordable to the poor, but up to 40% of subsidized goods are smuggled across to Colombia to be sold at a profit. Mr. Maduro created a government initiative called Great Mission of Sovereign Supply, which will be headed by the country's defense minister. Among other things, it can establish how purchase and distribution of food, medicine, and household goods are made. Meanwhile, Mr. Maduro accused Citibank of mounting a financial blockade on the country after the U.S. bank decided to close the government's international payments account with it. Citibank said the decision followed a periodic risk management review, but did not explain further. It would be implemented within 30 days, it added, but due to strict currency controls in place since 2003, the Venezuelan government relies on Citibank for foreign currency transactions. The federal government in Brazil says it is releasing additional funding to beef up security ahead of next month's Olympics in Rio de Janeiro. 
Sports Minister Leonardo Picciani said the armed forces would get an extra 24 million U.S. dollars to help them meet security needs. The military would begin patrolling sports venues from 24th of July, he added. More than 80,000 police and soldiers will patrol the streets of Rio for the duration of the games. The state of Rio de Janeiro has recently cut budgets across the board, including that of the police. The police in Rio recently staged demonstrations against the late payment of salaries and a lack of basic necessities like car fuel and toilet paper. Correspondents say the protests are a symptom of the political and economic woes which have engulfed Brazil in recent times. Brazil's Senate suspended the country's president, Dima Rousseff, in May and then began impeachment proceedings against her over allegiance that she manipulated the government budget ahead of her 2014 re-election campaign. On the economic front, government figures for the first quarter of 2016 show that Brazil was experiencing its worst recession in 25 years, and the Olympic Organizing Committee has had to deal with the news that several famous sportsmen, including golf world number one Jason Day, have withdrawn from the Games because of its fears about the Zika virus. However, the CEO of the Games has said that concerns about the virus affecting the Olympics have been blown out of proportion. This has been ABTV News. I'm Stefano, and keep watching American Bollywood TV.